My name is Don Romano. I'm the Forensic Supervisor and DNA Technical Leader at the Contra Costa County Office of the Sheriff Crime Lab. In 2010, um, a pro uh, Joseph Nesa was on probation um, for petty theft. He actually had a history of stealing women's lingerie and hosiery. Um, and in violation of his parole, he was selling uh, ammunition at flea markets. So they went to his house to conduct a search and they ended up finding guns and, and ammunition, but they found a whole lot more. Uh, they found hundreds of thousands of photos of women um, in lingerie, some of them naked, and a lot of them appearing as if they were unconscious or possibly dead. Um, they then, then stumbled upon his notes that he had taken, which kind of looked like a rape diary, detailing hundreds of sexual assaults uh, all over the country from the time that he was 16. Yeah, and he was 76 at the time when they caught him. So just disturbing stuff like um, girl in, in North Buffalo Woods. Um, I, what is it? I took her in the back of my car. She cried. I didn't. I loved it. So uh, he actually had a ton of mannequins as well in, inside of his home. They're all wearing lingerie. Some of them had uh, ligatures around their necks. Um, and then on his kitchen table, investigators found a list, just a list of 10 unnamed women in geographical locations. And they weren't quite sure what that meant, but as they looked more and more into some uh, unsolved murder cases in the area, they realized that that might be his top 10 murder list. So they tied at least six women to the list by the end of the investigation, and they are still actively looking for more. But they were able to tie them to the list by, the location was actually the location in which he had dumped the body. Uh, he had pictures of many of these women in his safety deposit box or at his house. He had their obituaries in his safety deposit box. Um, he had made entries on his logs uh, stating that he got even with an old account on the date that one of the women went missing. Um, he said that he was with a woman named Tracy on the date that she went missing. So they found little, little bits and pieces that tied women to NASO and to this list. Um, our laboratory had received a cold case grant in 2010 and our current, our, our uh, director at the time was really interested in cold cases. So he volunteered the lab to do all the DNA uh, work in these cases. In the end, the, that body was found in Marin County, California. So that DA's office decided to try uh, Joseph Naso for murder on all four women that they had found at the time. And he decides to represent himself. <laughs> he has a million dollars and he refuses to spend a cent of it on his defense. He gets several public defenders who he argues with, he hires, he fires multiple people. Um, so in the end, he defends himself and he gets convicted of uh, four counts of first degree murder. And then, so the Marin County DA's office wanted to go for the death penalty. So investigators had been working trying to link other cases at the time, but they didn't have two cases ready for trial. So in order to try for the death penalty, they uh, presented these additional two cases. Um, actually, in one of them, uh, the woman was strangled and put into the San Francisco Bay. She washed up um, north of San Francisco. She was actually living in the apartment building that Naso was the manager of at the time. He was actually the number one suspect in the case in 1981, and they never tried him for it. So that additional evidence, as well as you know all the evidence in total, um, he got convicted, and um, he's on death row right now. The first uh, sexual assault that's listed in his log um, was 1950 and he was, I calculated, 16 years old at the time. Yeah. He actually had been convicted of rape in uh, Rochester, New York um, in, I think it was 1958. 
Um, and actually, the investigators in, I think he got arrested after that, and the investigators in that case told him to get out of town. So he goes to Northern California. <laughs> His brother lived in Oakland at the time, and so he came out to Northern California, did a series of odd jobs, stuff like that. Um, but uh, the rapes continued throughout. I think maybe the last one that I saw was like 1998. He might have even had some into the 2000s. Um, the homicides from the six that we linked were uh, 78, uh, 73, 74, 78, 93, 94, and 81. What's interesting about the log is it wasn't written while he was doing it. He, you could tell by certain entries he would remember something and he would say, oh, going back to the entry 10, you know, 10 entries uh, earlier, I remember this. So this was basically an old man recounting all of his various crimes.